Well, welcome you guys back to Launch and Elevate Online, and this week we are excited to have you guys back as we continue into our series of Elemental. And we are in our third week for this series. We're excited, but before we get to our sermon time, we are going to have a video for you guys to watch as a challenge. We are going to Trick Shot Challenge again this weekend, just as we did these past two days on Elevate Fall Retreat. And we had an awesome, exciting time on Elevate Fall Retreat, you guys. If y'all were there, I hope y'all had a blast, because I definitely did myself. And we had a winner for our Trick Shot Challenge. And so this week, we're challenging someone new. If you want to send in your best trick shot from around the house, anything that you can use kitchen-wise, uh, household-wise, school-wise, you can use it this week and make your best trick shot video that you possibly can and then send it to my email at read.eps at faithbridge.org. Read.eps at faithbridge.org. Well, you guys, we are here for our third week of our Elemental series. And thanks to the internet, you guys, thanks to the internet, now we can learn how to do all sorts of things on the internet, especially we can do things on our, for ourselves. Like we can learn how to do things, uh, we can learn how to change our oil, we can learn how to make a specific recipe for our family if we're cooking. You can even uh, program a computer nowadays thanks to the great search engines of Google and all those great things that we can find on the internet and with the ease of finding it for ourselves. But at some point, if we're going to do it ourselves, uh, we've got to believe in the idea uh, enough to actually do that thing that we've set out to do. And sometimes that may not seem like the wise thing to do. There's some things out there that may not seem the wisest to do ourselves. Uh, I want us to look at an example here. I'm going to put it on the screen this is a do-it-yourself gastric bypass kit that was available on Amazon in 2011. I know that's dinosaur ages away, but they put this kit on. Y'all see this thing? I mean, this stuff is like, you can't make this up. They put it on the internet for people to use and to do surgery on themselves. Believe it or not, this product was actually offered to the public uh, for people to buy and actually perform, like I said, actual surgery on themselves, an actual bypass on themselves. It turns out that Amazon um, had to go to pretty great pains and pretty great lengths to, to remove this item off the internet because as we're about to read um, and I'm about to tell you there was a customer who was online that reviewed this product. It's $260. I mean you know you're thinking about surgery it's probably thousands of dollars. This is $260 product on Amazon that people can do themselves which is very scary to think about that. But there was this person that was claiming to be a customer and he mocked the product uh, as he put a review online and he said, uh, this is an awesome product. I have performed my first two bypasses using this kit on myself, of course, and I've lost over 200 pounds. There was some initial bleeding that occurred and I needed to be rushed to the emergency room due to the severe internal hemorrhaging but the three-week stay was well worth the cost I saved by doing my own bypass. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds pretty terrible to be able to do by yourself and almost lose your life because you try to do surgery on yourself. Um, so once this guy posted it on the internet, Amazon got a hold of it pretty quickly and frantically removed the product uh, from its site, which is pretty funny that they even just put it up there um, just in general. But uh, we can see that there's some things that some things we should just not be trying to do ourselves. Um, we should learn to rely on others. And so I want to ask you guys, man, would y'all believe in a do-it-yourself gastric bypass surgery kit enough to use it on yourself? Um, of course, we probably wouldn't. That's because no matter how much you believe that you can do surgery on yourself, it's simply probably not going to work for us to be able to do it on ourselves. We need somebody else to probably do that. Trusting a do-it-yourself surgery is kind of like putting your belief in the wrong thing. Um, as we continue this week into our elemental series, we're, we're going to talk about the importance of putting belief into action. And we're trying to change the world, you guys. I want, we're always trying to change the world. And with these things, as we talked about calling, character, and now we're going to talk about our third C, our third element 
of changing the world. This means that we must act on our beliefs. And it also means we need to believe the right things uh, instead of the wrong things. We need to believe those right things that come to us instead of those wrong things that may be fed to us. Believing the wrong things when it comes to our Christian doctrine is like trusting a do-it-yourself gastric bypass kit because it will only serve to get us into trouble rather than not put us in trouble. And so this week, for our third week of our elemental series, we're going to be looking at our third essential element, which we're going to be calling creed. Creed, in easier terms for us to understand the word creed, it it means putting our faith or belief into something and seeing how we can center our mission on the right things to believe. When we're believing the right things, we're in the right direction, people. In this elemental series, uh, we're going to be looking at the life uh, of Paul and the mission of Paul as we've been doing these past two weeks, um, as he's been changing the world through what his actions have shown, what his beliefs have shown. And so today, as we turn to our element of creed, we're going to be going back in time uh, from where we were yet uh, last week in our session uh, two for elemental And we're going to be starting at the start of Paul's third missionary journey. I know last week we talked about at the end of his missionary journey. Now we're going to be at the start of it. And so when he he wrote this letter in the beginning of this third missionary uh, journey that he was on, it was actually to the Corinthians. And so this book is called 1 Corinthians. And so we're going to be in 1 Corinthians today. Paul had spent more than a year in Corinth is what the country is called or the the nation is called in this time during his second missionary journey before his third. And, And this letter was part of a series of correspondence he had with the church there after he had left them and kept going on his journeys. And the reasons for this letter were were pretty much twofold. First, the Corinthians had asked Paul uh, some questions, which Paul helped address to them. Actually, it starts in chapter 7 when he starts addressing these questions that they have of 1 Corinthians. Um, These issues included really the practice of spiritual gifts in the church, the way Christians celebrated the Lord's Supper, and, and there was much more that they had to ask Paul in 1 Corinthians that we find out. But, but first, Paul addressed some problematic issues he had heard about just in general with the Corinthian church. And so these issues, they, they included in the Corinthian church divisions and, and sexual immorality that were becoming evident and, and very much forthcoming in the church of Corinth. In, in chapter 15, where we're going to be at this morning, Paul took a break from addressing the specific issues and questions that they had, and instead he addressed a key tenet, a key key part of exactly what the Corinthians believed. We're going to see how this issue affected many of the other issues in the Corinthian church and why Paul thought this was an essential element to putting the Christians in Corinth back on mission for God. And so, have you guys, I want to start this morning with, have you guys ever heard of a girl named Lauren Spicer? Lauren Spicer. I learned about Lauren Spicer this week, and chances are you probably have not heard about Lauren Spicer, but I'm going to tell you about Lauren Spicer. Lauren uh, is actually, she's the host of a British TV show that they call Cash in the Attic. And Lauren, she is the host of this show, and she sets herself up in this show as an expert on how to make money and to help people live debt-free. And she she writes these, um, even outside of her show, she writes these columns about budgeting and helping with money on all the tabloids. Um, But in 2009, there was a report that came out that Lorne had herself file for bankruptcy actually. She filed for bankruptcy and she's this woman who's telling people how to spend their money, what to do with their money, and she's the one who's going bankrupt. She's, she was using her married name to keep her, her secret, that her money expertise wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And so this belief in Lauren uh, avoiding debt didn't match up to her actual actions in her real life, in the, in the life that she led outside of her show, which forced her to really just 
like I said, declare bankruptcy, to go broke, and this do as I say, not as I do attitude that she takes on uh, became a real big problem for Lauren, and it, it can be a problem actually for us as Christians when we do the same thing as well. But the Apostle Paul, he, he spoke out against this kind of attitude that many of us can sometimes take on in his letter to the Corinthians. And in today's passage, he talked about the doctrine that, that Corinthian Christians, and we as well, uh, needed to both talk about and, and really live by, show our example, show our actions through how we're living. So we're going to read through 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. And let's read. It says, Now I would remind you, brothers of the gospel, I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the world or to the word, I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. You see, the Corinthian church, it was full of issues. I'm giving you a background for this verse and where we're at today. It was full of issues. They had a lot going on in the Corinthian church. And these issues were damaging the fabric and the connectedness of that church in Corinth. And there was divisions between really the rich and the poor uh, that, that broke at, at the Lord's table. If they're sitting together, there was not any unity. It was division after division after division. And they, they would go ahead and at this table with the rich and the poor, man, they would go ahead and eat uh, all the food that they wanted, leaving really the poor and those others pretty hungry and, and quite honestly starving. And, and there was also divisions, as I said, between the Christians of Jewish background and Gentile background. And we know that there was always this divide that they felt like between Gentiles and Jews. But Jesus came to show that no Gentile nor Jew uh, has, is limited to access or does not have access to me. All are welcome to find Jesus and to pursue him and Christianity. And so um, these issues and more, they had polluted the Corinthian church and really had taken it off of its true mission of following Jesus and giving all it had to Jesus. And so, but Paul, he diagnosed that the root problem with the Corinthians' mission was, was really a theological problem. In verse 12, Paul said, he said, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? This question went to the root of the problem in Corinth. The Christians there had a hard time connecting what they did with their bodies to the state of their soul. This wrong belief had, had caused them to believe that they could do whatever they wanted with their bodies, no matter what it was or who it really hurt. And the ultimate demonstration of this belief came as they discounted the resurrection. The resurrection, y'all. So Paul shared a creed, a statement of belief that I said earlier, that is one of the clearest statements of Christian doctrine in all of Scripture. In this statement found in verses 3 through 8, what we just read, Paul defended the resurrection and he gave many witnesses to it. After this statement, there was no question that resurrection from the dead was real and that Jesus had risen himself. We see in this passage and in the situation, it addresses that, that what we believe is critically important. What we believe is super important, you guys. If we get our Christian doctrine wrong, and as the Corinthians had really kind of gotten it wrong and gotten off their track, we will find ourselves straying from our mission as Christians. As a result, if we change the world 
uh, it may be for the wrong ways if our, if our doctrine's not right. If, if what we believe is not true, it may be all for the wrong reasons, all for the wrong ways. So our belief and our creed is vital to our mission that God has placed us here on earth to do. So as Paul began to unpack these questions that the Corinthians had, he had to start at the beginning. He had to lay a firm foundation of truth about who Jesus was and is and about his resurrection was crucial before Paul could tackle any of these issues, any of these questions that the Corinthians had. This is because the foundation informed everything else that was to come after it. The foundation that Jesus is the first thing. Jesus and his resurrection is first, and our salvation comes through that is first, and then all things we can follow up with knowing the truth and to know our beliefs are true. And so this is true for us as well. We can do a lot of deeds, but our foundation must be locked in on Christ. Otherwise, it, it, unfortunately, it doesn't mean a lot. It, it probably means nothing if it's not found in Christ, if our foundation is not found in Christ. And so to put this idea another way, what you believe fuels what you will do. So what we believe fuels what we'll do. So now let's look at how we can believe the right things and use that right belief as fuel for our mission. Let's take a quick look at this video real quick. Caitlin. Uh, one L. Did you really solve? And what's that? Can I solve? Okay. It is a prize puzzle. Yeah. I've got a good feeling about this. That's right. Let me get over this first before you win it. How, how did, well, uh, I had a good feeling about it. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you said, well, explain how you did it. I saw that it was a small word, so I've, and I said, maybe got a feeling about, I've got a, oh, I've got a hunch, and I said, oh, I've got a good oh, feeling. Oh, in that case, it was easy. Yeah. Uh, she has $9,368 cash. Yeah. And she's impressed all of us. Let's go on. So you guys, look at that video. That. How crazy was that? I mean, this girl totally and completely, she shocked the game of Wheel of Fortune. And when she solved that puzzle with only one letter on the board for her to solve, uh, Pat Sajak, who is the host of Wheel of Fortune, he's been the host for quite a while, he said that he had never seen anything like that. That he was completely blown away by her able to complete that puzzle all by herself with only one letter. The girl in that video, her name's Caitlin, and in this video, um, she later explains that the way that she solved that phrase is she said she looked at, she looks at puzzles in chunks, and she turned each word into an individual puzzle, and when the first word uh, on the screen was that blank apostrophe, two blanks after, and it didn't have an L, she knew that the word had to be I've. From there, she quickly figured out the first words, and the rest of the puzzle, she said, just really fell into place for her. So while Sajak thought the solution was, was kind of spooky and, and kind of crazy to Caitlin, the girl, it was based on her study, her practice, and, and really her belief about the best way to solve a puzzle in the least amount of time. She described her belief to be able to do that puzzle this way. There was a million things I'm not good at, but Wheel of Fortune, I can do. You see, Caitlin believed she knew the best way to solve a wheel of, fortune puzzle, wheel of Fortune puzzle, and she acted on that belief. Even when there was just one letter on the board, so we could say that her creed, her belief about solving puzzles, controlled her deed. Our creeds affect our deeds. This is simply true. What you believe fuels what you will do. So if we want to take part in God's mission and change the world, we need to make sure that the essential element of creed is at work in our lives. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to have every answer before we get started on our mission. Far from it, really. We will always be learning uh, new things, you guys. We're always learning about God and about ourselves. We're always learning new things about that. 
and we'll have questions that will take really a long time to answer. And sometimes some questions we may never answer at all, but, but there are also parts of our creed that all Christians can agree on. Classic statements of the church, true and uh, biblical statements on the church and how we are to act are huge creeds that we can live by. And you can even think about the Apostles' Creed, how important that is for us to know that we are called to serve Jesus and Jesus comes first. And that is where we find our base for our mission and to change the world for Jesus. And so, man, there's been ways that we can express what we believe. And that's through our creed. That's through us showing uh, what Jesus has changed in our hearts to affect and to go out towards others. As we talked about the first week, our calling, man, our calling can come when Jesus is at the forefront, when he's the foundation for us. And so as we continue to refine what we believe, we will find that, that it fuels what we will do. We may not do the deed if not for the creed, but the creed can fuel remarkable deeds for us. And so because we believe Christ is speaking, we can listen and we can obey what he leads us to do because we believe God loves every person so we can show God's love to even the most unlikely people that may not seem like they'll be shown love. So because we believe we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, we can take leaps of faith that will look risky to everyone else, and we can know that what you believe fuels what you will do. So let creed fuel your mission with God. This week and going forward, you guys, we are so glad we got to go through our third element in our elemental series as we covered Creed this week. Next week, we have our last week of our series, so you guys tune in for that as we finish up there. Let me pray for us, and then we will finish our time together. Lord, thank you for this morning and for these students hopping on here for Launch and Elevate Online, as it has been such a pleasure to get to be on here with them, uh, for them to know that uh, you are working in all of our hearts, Lord, working on uh, just building, continuing to build into us confidence and, and ability to go out and to live on mission for you, Lord, um, having hearts that are on fire for you, God. And may we see that uh, you're at work in all of our hearts. And Jesus, thank you for these students, for um, their commitment to get online and to um, just be here and be present for Launch and Elevate Online. We thank you for this time, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, guys. We will see you guys next week for Launch and Elevate Online for our last week of our sermon series, Elemental. You guys go get it. Y'all go get it on your trick shots, and we will see you guys in a little bit. Bye, guys.